Fooling Splint, you're live. Good evening, boys and girls, and boy, do I feel good today, because you know what? Griff is back. Griff is back. <laughs> He's not sick anymore. He's been juicing for the past 10 days. That's Hope right. You're feeling better, Griffin. Uh, welcome back. Hope you're feeling better. I'm happy to be back, Ralph. Yeah, it was a bit of a tough week, man. I typically, I was, I was actually, I was pissed off, man, because I take pride in my health, and for six years I haven't been sick. I get on that damn airplane, man, and I get off the plane and I feel a little bug. All of a sudden, the entire week, I'm a mess, sweating, juicing all week. As you've been making fun of me for my cucumber, lemon water, you know all of it, but. Main key ingredient, we haven't gotten off the pace. We're still drilling games. We're still on tap, and we're ready to roll, brother. That's, that's good. I'm glad you're feeling better. I want to first welcome Terrence Goldman, who's a new Docs member. He signed up. Uh, he subscribed today. And Jason What's up, Terrence? Uh, Klawinski is a new member. He signed up today at the Docs at, by, about a half hour ago. So uh, hopefully you guys are watching, and thanks for uh, signing up and subscribing. Uh, your subscription's going to be jam-packed every day. You have free play videos from some of the best. We have Griffin doing free play videos. Tony George, Scott Spicer, sometimes myself, I get mornings and sometimes I just don't have enough time. Uh, but uh, we have some guys that do some killer, killer videos. So Terrence and Jason, welcome to, uh, welcome to the Docs family. Hopefully you guys catch some big, big, big <coughs> tickets over the weekend. So how was your, today's a Wednesday. I had a heck of a day. It's been storming buckets where I've been at today. So it's been crazy. Uh, let's we, we, before we get started, let's throw out some free plays. I know some games are getting ready to start uh, right sure. now. Do you have any free plays for you? Uh, you could go first. Yeah, I've got a few t uh, tapped in here. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna do my NBA free play because I'm gonna tell people the, the NBA's playoffs are starting soon. There's only two more days: to, today, tomorrow, and then there's Friday. Be very, very cautious when you bet the NBA these next two days. Mm -hmm. uh, already planning their vacation. Some teams just don't want to get hurt before the playoffs. Uh, my free play is not a game. It's a Miami Heat team total over 105 and a half. They're playing the Dallas Mavericks. Miami Heat's offense has been really well. Their last 10 games, uh, seven, or last seven games, five of them have gone over the total. And those seven games, six of them have gone, gone over the 105 and a half team total. Uh, I just think Miami's going to put up some points. You know Dallas is going to give up points. You know Dallas is going to shoot the three ball pretty well. So if, you, if you're Miami, you need to protect <laughs> home court. Because playoff Jimmy doesn't want to lose in South Beach uh, tonight. So I just thought the team total over 105 and a half uh, is a nice play. Uh, I, I have a couple of free plays, Ralph, as far as MLB and NBA. But since you kicked it off with some NBA, let's roll with it. And this is actually one of my YouTube free plays as well. I posted this play. Um, I do want to give you guys a little bit of a more of a statistical breakdown verbalized because this this game popped out at me so heavily. I wanted it on my premium card so bad. I just never ended up tossing it in. But Memphis, 27 and 52. They're getting 18 and a half points here tonight. They're on a two game losing streak. Cleveland, they're three and seven in their last 10 games. They're on a three game losing streak. Cleveland, get these stats right now. 13, 15, and 1 against the spread as home favorites. Tonight, they're home favorites. 17, 19, and 1 against the spread at home in general. They are playing at home tonight as a favorite. And Memphis, on the other hand, they're 20 and 15 against the spread as a road underdog and 26 and 22 against the spread with one day, uh, one day's worth of rest. And on the road, 23 and 17 against the spread. 18 and a half points. I mean, you have got that is so overpriced in my eyes, especially considering the fact Cleveland has dropped three straight games. They're three and seven in their last 10. I don't care who's playing for the Grizzlies. It could be their third, fourth stringers. 18 and a half points is a lot of points. And now don't let me over push you to taking this game because this is not something you go crazy, crazy over. But where the metrics stand on this point and the way Memphis kind of always sticks into their games. They always kind of contest everybody that they play. I really like Memphis here, especially Cleveland's not playing good basketball. Take Memphis with the points. I do shop around some uh, uh, offshore books have 19 on that game. So maybe, I mean, we still have what, uh, and about an hour left. Let's see what the public does. Uh, in the next hour on that one. If there's one nineteen, I always tell people if one number is out there, that means other books could follow as well. So you have an hour, maybe you get the best number, uh, and boom, DraftKings just moves it to nineteen. There you as go. I, as I just see Something's right now. off. There's a red flag in this game, Ralph. I mean, we're talking. This is one of the highest spreads I've seen all season. So oh, yeah. well, you're, you're probably going to see some higher ones probably tomorrow and Friday with the with the season getting ready to end. I'm going to jump on this one really quick. 
uh, as a as a live bet, Rays Angels four two to uh, seventh inning. The total was nine and a half, and I was trying to get my brother to get, uh, to put some uh, live bet action on me. People know that it's hard for me to get down to action because I can't sign up with some of these books. I do some consulting work where I, it had nine and a half live betting, uh, and now it's eight and a half the total at plus one hundred five on the yeah. under on this one. Uh, it's four two Rays. Uh, Rays bullpen's been uh, I've been pitching a lot better. I just don't see. Uh, this game going nine runs in this one in the seventh inning. So I, I, I was looking at that live bet. But I'll throw out my baseball play today. It's uh, it's against – it's with the Chicago Cubs. It's not an actual a game. It's a prop bet. Actually, okay. I do like the Padres today. Uh, the number just got, escaped me. I tried to bet the Padres at minus 140. It's now minus 150 unless – unless you want to jump on me because I know Circa and South Point have minus 140. Everyone else has minus 150 on it. But Kyle Hendricks is on the mound for the Cubs, the professor. The right. only led long Chicago Cub that's been on a team that won the World Series. He's the last one. <laughs> yep. He can throw up some softballs. If his command is not going, if he's not hitting his spots, he can throw up some softballs. I like him. Uh, hits allowed over five and a half. Now it's a little juicy. It's a minus 135, minus 140 some places. He's been rocked. He's given up nine hits against the Dodgers and I think seven hits against, uh, I, I, what is this? I can't remember the other team that he pitched against. Hold on, I got it right here. Uh, yeah, he gave up. I'm sorry, eight hits against the Dodgers and nine hits against the Rangers. Okay. Padres will Padres will hit him today. Uh, I think I like the Padres to come back and win this. When the Cubs took yesterday's game, uh, Padres only scored one run yesterday against a rookie pitcher. You figure their bats are going to be lined up. That rookie pitcher yesterday was throwing 96 in the fifth I, inning, and now yeah. Kyle Hendricks who's going to be throwing up 76. <laughs> probably in the first inning. I think that Padres get to him. I like hits allowed by Kyle Hendricks over five and a half. And I, I, you know, I like that, Ralph. I'm expecting a much different season out of the Padres. You know, last season you looked at I, that. I agree lineup. with you. I mean, they are stacked across the entire board, and they were last season, and they continue to fail and fail and fail. And this season, they're off to a hot start. I mean, Tatis hitting that grand slam this early in the season, walk-off, that is really what you need as a team. And that's kind of, that's their leader. I mean, aside from Machado, I, I mean, I don't care. Tatis, that's their leader. That's their shortstop. That's the name. That's the brand of the Padres. Everybody knows Tatis. You want to go to a Padres game? That's the guy typically you want to watch. Now that Soto's gone, I mean, that that's that's the playmaker. And I expect a very good season out of the Padres. Is my free play today? The Padres, absolutely not. I'm rolling on the other side of this thing. I've got a free play with the Marlins and Yankees. Yankees. Coming out red hot to start the season. They're 10 and 2 already, and they're playing the Marlins, who have the worst record in baseball right now. I believe they are 1 and 11, if I'm not mistaken. Tonight, Strowman's on the bump. He's already shoving. He's had one game where he went six innings. I think he gave up three hits, one run, maybe no, no runs. It was no runs. And on top of that, they're at home in this matchup. Ryan Weathers is pitching for the Marlins. He chucks from the left side. He's already been shelled. This season, Yankees hitting 280 against left-handed pitching. Give me the Yankees minus one and a half at a minus 115 line with that powerhouse offense. I'm going to give the Yankees a double bird, the middle finger, because I had the Yankees on the run line yesterday, and they went 3-2. So uh, I'm not I, – I like the play. I had thought about it again today, but then my but my computer screen I gave me the middle – my computer screen gave me the middle finger and says, we ain't doing that again. <laughs> so just uh, sit back and watch that one. So I like to play uh, Weathers, Lefty. Uh, Soto's been hitting the ball against lefty uh, this early season as well. Yeah. So I, I like that play. I couldn't do it because I got part of my French screwed yesterday because the Yankees went Absolutely. three to two and I had the, the run line yesterday. I know we texted back and forth and it's Masters week. I'm going to throw out one Masters sure. uh, 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 free play in there. And it's because the, the ratings, the Masters need this old man yeller to, to, to play well. Tiger Woods to make the cup or to make the cup minus or was it it's plus 105 it was this morning I don't know if it's changed I think he makes it even though the weather is going to be bad on Thursday that could that could that could hurt him if he doesn't finish his round that means you probably have to go up on Friday at 10 and then he'll tee off again at one for a second round I'm hoping the weather is not that bad because let's face it anyone who has a bad back like myself who's had a back surgery two knee surgeries and a whole bunch of other surgeries when you've had surgeries and it's bad weather, it's going to stiffen up and all that. So Old. I'm, ho 
I'm hoping it doesn't get too bad and he finishes and he makes a cut. Because let's face it, they need him for ratings. Now, Scotty Scheffler, who's a favorite at plus 325, I've been telling people, we need to be talking about Scotty Scheffler more. He's getting Tiger Woods prices back in the day. When Tiger Woods were playing an event, he would be plus 250, 2-1, two to 3-1 to one to, be, to win it all. That's the kind of prices Scotty Scheffler is getting now these days. And no one's talking about it because old man Yellen decided to play the Masters this week and decided not to have sex because he's going to play the Masters this week. I don't understand that story in general. He's re- doing the retention, brother. <laughs> yeah, but, but, uh, we should be talking about Scotty Scheffler more, but I, I think Tiger Woods makes the cut. And I'm getting plus money on that one. But just plus 550 for him to withdraw if he can't, if he can't finish it. So I also have a small bet on that one because I couldn't pass up plus 550 on an old man Yeller who has a lot of surgeries on himself. All right, I, I got one more quick little free play for everybody, and it's a sneaky play. It's the Astros versus the Royals right now. Royals are red hot. And one guy that I really like to take out of this is starting pitcher Seth Lugo. This guy, back in 2022, was an absolute star. Going into 2023, he pitched pretty solid, but then he got really shaky and got cracked. I, I want to say four outings in a row, completely annihilated. Then towards the end of the season, he kind of dialed back in. This season coming into it, I have his stat pulled up somewhere on here. He's got, so he's 1-0 and right now. 12.2 innings pitched, 0.71 ERA, 7 Ks, and 3 walks. That's who's pitching tonight for the Royals. Then on top of that, the way they've been swinging the bat, they're 6-2 and two at home. You've got Bobby Witt Jr., who is probably, I mean, easily to start the season, that that the MVP. To st- I mean, we're, we're, we're way ahead of where we're going right now. But Bobby Witt Jr. is the type of player who's going to hit the long ball. He's going to hit the double. He's going to force a triple. He's going to get that clutch job done when you need it. So the Royals right now at a minus 110 first five-inning play. I'm looking for Bobby Witt and Seth Lugo. I'm I'm looking for Seth to shut them down and Bobby to get on base, steal one if he has to, and get knocked in by somebody else in their lineup like Perez or somebody who just rakes because they do have a good lineup this year. The Royals are not going to be the same Kansas City Royals team that we're used to watching for the past three, four, five years prior to when they – won the World Series back in, what year was that, Ralph? God. Jeez. Oh, uh, it wasn't too long ago. No, it wasn't. I can't remember when it was. Like 20, years. maybe 2018, 2017? Something like that. Let me see. So it was, but they are not going to be that same team. They're not going to be the same team as last year. And you could see last year towards the end of the season, they were picking it up. They were playing very good baseball, actually winning games, because the entire season they were tied in that last place race, them in Oakland. They went the whole season. They were the two most garbage teams in the league. KC started picking it up towards the end of the season. They went on like a 12-game win streak. Now they come right out the gates and they're flying. I love it. Steal it quick. First five innings, minus one time KC. Rodney, yeah, how are like- you doing, bro? Hey, Rodney, what's going on? Uh, I agree with you on that one. I agree with your your analogy on the Kansas City Royals because let's face it, the AL Central at the end of the season could look like we're in Back to the Future uh, 4 episode. It could be the Detroit Tigers winning the division, KC Royals sneaking up to maybe get a wild card spot, Minnesota, and then your garbage White Sox. Oh, Uh, Ralph, you want me to get pissed (laughs) off? We could talk about that garbage, (laughs) most most pathetic baseball team I've ever seen in my life. I look at this lineup with the Chicago White Sox and you know you typically as a fan you look at the lineup and say you're in the sixth inning and you're at your nine hitter you're at your eight or your seven hitter in the lineup I look through this lineup and it's like we're getting to the top here in a second one two three I'm looking at all outs I'm like there's not a single guy here my I don't have my powerhouse I don't have my leadoff hitter I don't trust anyone on their team pitching's been good Pitching's been very good, but are you any one guy that's pissing me off? Andrew Vaughn, what are you doing? Vaughn is the most, he's supposed to be our guy this season. The guy can't even get a base hit. You want to talk about me getting pissed off, Ralph? Let's change that one. Oh, my <laughs> 20, God. I'll change the subject. 2014 is when the Royals uh, win the World Series. Uh, I almost played this game. I was looking at Kansas City, uh, and I was also looking at maybe the under, but then the uh, Astros changed the pitching, like really, really right, right, right Right before uh, we were our release time, the Spencer Aragetti, I think his dad invented spaghetti. Uh, so I, I passed on it because of the late pitching change uh, for the Houston Astros. But I agree. Love the plus money on Seth Lugo. Again, almost played the under because 
the Astros can't score. I mean, their no. last their, for, their last ten games, Brutal. seven of them have gone under the total. So. They did this last year, bro. Yep. Do you remember how they started last season? They opened up against the White Sox. White Sox took three of four from them. They started off brutal last season, but. Who is raking right now is Jordan Alvarez. He is yes. like he's like thirteen for twenty four already, dude. He's hitting like five hundred right now. I know. You, you can't stop that guy. Timmy, welcome to the the show, Timmy. Thanks for watching. He has Cleveland on the run line. Why are you gonna get Griffin back started again? We finally calmed him down, Timmy, and then you take your uh, White Sox on the run. So now you're gonna get him mad again, but. Do it. But, it's it's a free win at this point. <laughs> They're so bad. They won't score today. Good. They're going first with nobody out in the first. There we go. <laughs> Good but luck, Timmy, in that run line. You'll ever see in baseball. They are dead last right now in runs. And I want to say, prior to yesterday's game, I think they had 13 runs offensively all season long. And it was something like they scored five of those runs in one inning. Not yesterday's five in one inning. Prior to that. So, really, they were at one point averaging one run per game for 10 games. That is the most pathetic disgusting statistic I have ever heard about my home team who I live and die for. Baseball is my sport. This is where I get juiced up. And that is how we're going to perform to open up the season. I'm betting on the Cubs all year. Like, what's going on? There's a team oh, There's God. a team on the north side if you want to. We, we will accept you with open arms. There's a team on the north side if you yeah, want Yeah, you can have them. God. Uh, we'll, we'll accept a, we'll, we'll, we'll make it a, we'll make a waiver for you. I'll vouch for you. Just like a drink, my- Ralph. What's that? What do you drink that butterscotch? Nah, give me some of the, the whiskey. What is oh, it? Peanut butter whiskey? Peanut butter whiskey. I need a shot of that. Uh, I haven't had a, I haven't had a cocktail in a while. I should probably crack one open. I haven't had one. Oh yeah. Bourbon. Oh, don't look at, look at the mod already. Yeah. Bourbon's, bourbon's, my favorite. It. <laughs> bourbon's my favorite. The mod knows me. The bourbon's my favorite. I haven't had a cocktail in a, in a long, I can't remember. Neither have I, man. I, I got, the, I caught that bug. I haven't drank in a little while. I drank, uh, eat. So my, we, my family, I was back in Chicago for Easter. So we celebrated on Saturday night. We all went to dinner and everything. That's the last time I had a drink. Well, I had a couple, I had a couple martinis, but that, that's, uh, that's a lot different story. I didn't actually drink Sunday. So I haven't drank since that Saturday, that day before, uh, what's it called? Hey, Easter. What's Timmy up? Timmy wants to know about, uh, Dallas and Miami. Tim, if you didn't oh. miss my free play, I'll mention it right now. I have, I have the Miami. Miami Ralph. That's all I you. Have- I have a team total Miami Heat team total one uh, 105 and a half at Miami. I just think playoff Jimmy uh, is going to keep this game competitive, score some points. Miami's been scoring points lately, which is shocking, especially during the, so close to the playoffs. You figure their defense will be on points. So I have a team total over on that one for Miami. For me, it's really hard to find actually some good NBA plays, side plays, because I know the playoffs is so close. I, I try not to look at that, that much games in there, but like he says, uh, uh, Griff has a premium play on it, so he'll probably cash that one. But that's what I have uh, on the game itself. I think I think Dallas could probably sneak one up. But I think the overs are probably a good play as well. Yeah, no, I, I'd love to touch on that one, Timmy. But I have some real deep analysis with that play, and I did I did a lot of homework on it, and I really do love my play. And I hate being that guy, like yo, go buy my pick. But one thing is for sure. We offer free 60 bucks at the website. You could literally go make a free account and get the pick. I hate sounding like that because that's just totally not me at all. But I can't just give out my premium plays here on the lives right now. We already gave out, I want to say, like six or seven free plays to begin with to start the show as well, Timmy. But if you have any thoughts on any other games, Timmy, I will give you full analysis, in-depth, whatever you'd like, brother. Sometimes I, sometimes Timmy, I actually slip and give out my premium play. So do I. I, 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 I love this play, man. I love this play. So I, I don't want to go too far. But uh, what are we thinking here, Ralph? What do you want to jump into? You want to go into uh, baseball here? Or do you want to go NBA? We can still throw in some. I forget to check on my. Or, yeah. So, so the uh, live bet, Timmy, I gave. I gave out the under in the Angels game. Live bet eight and a half. Now it's six and a half. We we're in the bottom inning. It's still four to two. I think there's still value on that one. You're getting plus 125 on that one. I would maybe take a shot at uh, maybe getting the Angels plus uh, plus one and a half, plus 180. I could see them putting a late run uh, on the nice board, maybe Timmy. losing 4-3. So I could see that one. But, yeah, I would take a shot at that one. <clears throat> Timmy, I got Memphis. My free play, I got Memphis with the points. If you can get them at 19, snag them. Uh, I have the Yankees minus one and a half. And I have uh, Kansas City, first five innings. 
Those are my three free plays that I gave out on the show. And I love them all, and I gave in-depth breakdowns on them. Uh, they're have, good plays. I have a baseball mm-hmm. prop bet, Kyle Hendricks. Uh, total uh, hits allowed, uh, five and a half. Uh, you can find that everywhere. Uh, Cubs, Padres. I also like the Cubs, Padres. I did feel like laying minus 150. You can find it any lower. I definitely would take a shot. Yeah. On I just think the professor. Cease on the hard. bump, though. We'll see. The Padres scare me with Cease on the bump because I watched him at every single one of his outings last season. And I think he was very much overvalued through this offseason. I think the side, I, I don't like how the side, how the, the deal went down. I think we could have done a lot better as a team, as an organization, especially giving away our quote unquote ace pitcher. But Dylan Cease is a shaky pitcher. This guy either comes in and he's going to throw seven innings and he's not going to give up a run and maybe one hit and maybe 10 strikeouts, or he's going to come out and have one of those debacle innings where he gives up five, six runs. He starts walking people. He can't strike anybody out. Dylan Cease, in my eyes, is always a risk taker to bet on. I don't like betting on him, whether we're playing the worst team in baseball or the best team. But on the other hand, Hendricks. He's kind of becoming old news, and there are a lot of teams are starting to adapt to the way this guy throws the baseball. He's hey, already got an 11. There. Be careful there. Treading water against the Cubs. Oh, right there, yeah, careful. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph's Cubbies <laughs> over there. But Hendricks, on the other hand, he is already gotten shelled this season, and we've been talking about the way the Padres have been playing offensively, and right now, what are they averaging per game? They're 11th in the MLB in runs per game. Yeah, They're averaging five runs per game. Cubs are averaging a lot. If Cease comes in locked in, they ain't scoring. I don't care. They'll score a few, but they're not going to score a lot. On San Diego's side, on their defense, you know they're going to come out and powerhouse some runs off of Hendricks. I don't think Hendricks is going to come out as a stud. I just, I just don't. Especially if only scoring one run yesterday. Tony's in the house. What's up, Tony? Tony, how we doing? Tony. <laughs> I love it. Tony G in the house. He's probably over at Circa right now. He's He's got his nice Jim Beam and 7 up. I was going to say, I can guarantee you he's got a cocktail in his hand right now. Oh, yeah. What time is it over there? Three, uh, it's 3.20. Maybe not now. I would say maybe an hour, maybe. No, this is early for Tony. Yeah, for yeah, sure. For I sure. Just... Give him a couple hours. Happy oh, hour, my man. He is. He's at the so, spot. <laughs> I, was I was wrong. I, I was completely wrong. I, I just talked to the Circle Boys uh, yesterday. I talked to Rich Bacheleri and all them. Uh, uh, so they're working. A, Rich Bacheleri is working on Circa's app right now. They're doing a lot of good stuff right now. So I, we were going back and forth uh, on some ideas that he was asking me, which I have no idea he was asking me about because uh, Rich Bacheleri is the guy that pretty much hired me in 97 at Caesars Palace. So uh, I was a little bit more honored that he was asking me. And he's a new Hall of Fame inductee over at Circa this year uh, for sports betting. So he's gotten inducted into the sports betting Hall of Fame. So uh, Circa boys, uh, congratulations on all your success. And Richie, thank you for hiring me. Ralph, I I have a quick question for you. So I was actually asked this question earlier on the season. I think Tony asked me it on a podcast. Now we're deeper in the season. So this is a more valuable question. What is your biggest surprise thus far in the MLB season? Uh, I would think the the Marlins. Uh, I mean, they're just they just look awful, I, which is kind of good because you figured they're they're probably right. gonna, they're like, probably going to sell. They're going to be sellers in, in the during trade deadline. I've been telling people if your team is in the hunt, there's going to be some very interesting names in the trade sellers. If you're the Marlins, uh, their whole pitching staff, which has had some good arms. Out there could be Alvin sellers. Alvaro though out is a killer, man. Yeah, if you're the Toronto Blue Jays and you're struggling, you figure their whole infield could be on, on the trade market uh, and stuff no like ball. that. Yeah, so uh, it, it, it can be very interesting. But I would say when you were asking me that question, Miami hit me right in, in the head on that one. I think that's probably the biggest surprise. And I think everyone thinks Miami's going to be – I think the Colorado Rockies might be the world's the worst baseball team. Uh, when all said and done, they're going to be sellers. I know oh, you're going to say it's your White Sox. But- White Sox are the worst. It's not even close. It's not even close. The White Sox are the worst team that I have ever watched, ever, from one to nine. Their lineup cannot get a base hit. If they score runs, they score them all in one inning, and that's all you get from them. They're dead last in offensive runs per game. I'm done with them. He's Any- done anyways, with them, people. He's done with them. Moving on. Moving on. Ralph, what, what else you got on your mind? You want to keep rolling baseball? We can go. Sox scored. Top of the See? first. They scored. Are you kidding me? They're, they better score them all now, though. Yeah. Better score yeah. them all now or we're done. 
Yeah, you got you got good stuff, Lou. Well, okay, we get the NBA playoffs right on there. I know there's games tonight. Yeah. You have a big play tonight. There's a really interesting game, Phoenix Clippers tonight. Can Phoenix play as badly as they did last night? Uh, and that one, I was hoping the Celtics would play tonight because how do you shoot no free throws in the game last night? Everyone, I was on. Oh, uh, quick, really quick. Gabe says hi to you. Did a show last night on the Sports Grind. He said hi. Uh, uh, to you and the uh, oh, perfect. Uh, Say hello but, as well, please. But hello, we had, me and him were having this discussion last night. We were we weren't talking anything about gambling. It was all about how do the Boston Celtics do not shoot a free throw? What you don't want to know how they shot fifty two three pointers yesterday and they only shot the ball ninety six times. Shut up! I'm holding off. Fifty two three pointers yesterday. The Celtics only two free throws were shot in the game. Celtics had zero. <laughs> But hey, they hit for uh, oh, Milwaukee hit forty seven percent from the perimeter. They yeah. hit thirty two. They hit seventeen for fifty two from the outside yesterday. Zero free throws. That's terrible. And you, and, I, and and you wonder why people say the NBA at times could be a bad product. There you go, right there. <laughs> sure. Sure, I agree with you. Yesterday, I actually I had the magic as a small play, and then who was my big play yesterday? I cash it. I had the thunder yesterday, and they absolutely rolled them. I mean, dude, you just you can't fade them at home one ever, and you can't fade Shy Alexander. He, yeah, he came back yesterday. He's it was yesterday. his first game back. 40 points, seven boards, four assists. What else can you ask for a guy? They shot 34% from the perimeter. They were great on the floor. Or, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 36% from the for, uh, perimeter. My, my apologies. They rolled yesterday. They played very good basketball. So I like OKC the way that they've been playing. Sacramento, on the other hand, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan, especially they are not a good team to bet on. If you want to pull up them against the spread, even at home, they are not a good team to bet on. They're a good money line home team to bet on. If you can get them on the money line at home, grab that always. But that's it. Anything ATS, Sacramento Kings, they are not one of those teams that I like to mess with. No, they're not the same team as last year. The beam has not been lit as much as it was last year, especially against the spread. So I agree. They're not a team that I, last year I was all with them. I, I cashed some, I? Big, some good tickets with them last year. This year, totally, totally different team. What are we looking for in a, for a for a viewing viewing ship and for a betting purpose? What do you what are you looking at for this up, upcoming NBA playoffs? What are you looking at? As far as what do you, what do you mean by that? Like teams, like what, what do you have your eye on a team that maybe can make uh, maybe make some extra cash for your wallet? Uh, uh, see, I wish I would have pulled up the, uh, you know what, I might be able to. I could pull up, here, give me one second. Um, I'm going to pull up the lines on futures for this right now really quick. I know that they were posted, but there's always a way to find, uh, what's it called? Give me one second. I want to get the futures lines on this because I like I, this. I have them in front of me. What do you need? I, I'm pull, I got them up right here. I got them up right here. Um, quick, hold on, hold on. Give me a second. Brewers, the Brewers, Timmy says Brewers last three games, 29 runs. Yeah, Brewers have been hitting the ball. They could be, they could be a, a surprise team, Timmy, uh, in that central. The Cardinals have been off. I think the Cardinals are going to, there's another team that could be sellers. Goldie could be gone if they're struggling really bad. Arnardo could be gone if they're struggling bad. They might, I don't want to say hit the reset button in St. Louis because you never hit the reset button in St. Louis. Uh, but they could be they're very interesting, Timmy. So here's my thing. When it goes to conference, Ralph, I'm going to list it right down the line. I like the Clippers. I don't love them. Plus 370, that's a very small sprinkle. Minnesota Timberwolves, I don't like it at all. Dallas Mavericks, that might be something to sprinkle with, but it's nearly impossible. On the other side of the West, I love Denver taking that. I don't think anybody else, especially at this point of the season, this is when Joker goes off. This is when Denver plays basketball. This is when they play to win. They bring the heat. They did it last year. They do it year in, year out with this guy. He's an absolute beast. He rem It's like, and I hate going back to this because Purdue mother, Zach Eady. Those two kind of remind me of each other. And during the March Madness tournament, you watched Zach Eady and you were like, this guy is impossible to stop. Like, he, he, you can't stop this guy. Well, that's where Joker kind of puts me in that position. Plus 150, I, I don't love the juice on it, but I do think that's a ticket that will cash. Heading over to the East, I mean, minus 150 with the Celtics isn't bad at all. Celtics are for sure going to win that conference. Um, heading to the other side, I mean, you could sprinkle a little bit. My only other team that I would consider messing around with would be the Bucks. 
and that'd be so light and nearly impossible. Yeah, with, the Greek, freak, with the Greek freak getting hurt yesterday, that's it's hard to sprinkle it's, some cash. You're out. you're done with it. You're done. Hey, right. Now there's a lot of other future bets we could go with. We can go with amount of wins. We can go division winners. However you want to play about it, you let well, me know. I've got the lines up in front of me, so I could tef- definitely roll these roll these across. I did a show this morning, and that, that question was asked: uh, who I thought could be now that the playoffs are such a thing. And I said we're going to see a trend coming out pretty much, and I think the trend stops when in, during the NBA playoffs. Kansas City Chiefs back to back Super Bowl winners. Yeah, Connecticut Huskies, back-to-back national championship winners. Okay, I know where you're going. Denver Nuggets, back-to-back <laughs> NBA champions. You, you are 110 percent correct. This is when the Joker goes off. Uh, on this one, I see him having a big, big, big playoffs. And I kind of disagree with you. Zach Eady's no Joker. He doesn't have a jump shot, and and, and the Joker's defense is so much better it's than Zach Eady's ability. Defense. Yeah, but, but I, I can see you. that. I can see that. Uh, but yeah, I just think it's Denver's to lose, especially now with Milwaukee being out. I think Boston is probably going to be the clear runner in the East unless they shoot horrible from the three-point line. And, and they, they won't. Play defense. And Jason Tatum uh, does Jason Tatum things in the playoffs, and we see playoff playoff Jimmy beat them again. Uh, right. That's the only thing I can see. I think it's Denver's to lose uh, in the West. So there's really, for me, I mean, I think you could still get plus 150, plus 160, somewhere around there to win the West. I think that's a great ticket to have and maybe mm-hmm. hedge off if you're if you're in that one so uh, that's something for me uh, on that one juke flogs once in miami mavs or miami we broke this down uh, multiple times uh griffin can't say anything he has a premium play on it i like miami he right, team over 105 and a half and i kind of lean towards the over myself on that one so uh that's our play on that one but it should be interesting nba playoffs is here next our next show when next wednesday be nba playoff time so yes sir uh, we'll, dive in, we'll dive into that we'll dive into some uh series prices and all that that should be fun our next week's show should be fun because the nba playoffs and then just right a corner nhl playoffs it, it, it is out there so it should be we fun. got an april 20th nba what do we have nhl uh nhl's when will playoffs start for nhl two weeks two weeks from now it's 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 right after or right after NBA. Yeah, Liter- so, what is today? Today the is the tenth. Yeah, right after, literally. Yes. What yeah, is? It? So it should be into. It's, it's gonna be a fun time. But April's always fun and stuff like that. We get playoffs and stuff, so I, I can't wait. But thank you for everyone for joining, in. Griffin. I'm glad you're healthy. I'm glad you're feeling better, Tony. Thank thanks for jumping on in, Tony. Have a cocktail for me and Griff. <laughs> I know I'm not having a cocktail tonight, so. Maybe just have one just for myself. I don't know if the man right there is having one. I won't be drinking tonight. So, not tonight, yeah, Ralph. Tony, just have two for us tonight. Uh, thank you for chiming on in, Tony. Oh, uh, love. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't watch Tony and Griff's shows, uh, I, I don't know when you guys' show is on. I, to, uh, correct me if I'm we, wrong. We do them randomly Tuesdays and Thursdays okay. on Streamyard. I definitely, definitely jump and on I there. Do. Uh, definitely, definitely jump on their show and watch it. Really, really good content. And don't forget to jump on the Doc Sports I'm and watch. Watch all their free play videos. Griffin does great work. Tony does great work. Scott Spritzer, all those guys. I can't say I do great work because I miss a lot of it days on free plays. So <laughs> I can't say that. But I want to thank everyone for watching. I want to thank Monitor. Uh, thank you for doing all your great work out of town. You, she's outside right now doing all this. So I want to say thank you to her. Uh, everyone, be safe this week. Enjoy UFC 300 this week. Kentucky Derby's around the corner as well. NBA playoffs and all that. It's a fun, fun, fun time to sit around and, and blow the wife's allowance that she gives you in sports gambling. <laughs> have a great, great evening. Enjoy yourself. And again, please don't bet what you don't have. <laughs>